Hey everyone, it's Chad Pavel here. Today we're going to talk about converting to an S corporation if you're an LLC or a C corp. Are you even eligible and how much money can you really save? Before we jump in, if you're enjoying our video content, hit the subscribe button so we can continue to make awesome videos that help you make and save more money. Now let's get into the meat of this video. So we're going to cover why and when to consider S corp election as a tax status for your business. Is your business even eligible? to become taxed as an S Corp, how to actually go about electing S Corp taxation status, how taxes work before and after you elect S Corp for single member LLCs, for multi-member LLCs or partnerships, and for C corporations that, again, have now been elected to be taxed as an S Corp. And finally, is it all worth it? What are the pros and cons? How much money can you really save by shifting over to an S Corp? So here are the basics of S-Corps. S-Corp taxation can provide big benefits to owners compared to C-Corps and LLCs. And those are both single LLCs and multi-member LLCs or partnerships. The S-Corp is actually not a separate legal entity. No, it's either an LLC or a C-Corp that has elected S-Corp tax status. So as far as the legal entity formation is, it's either an LLC or it's a corp. You're simply electing S-Corp tax status with the IRS and most states will actually acknowledge your S-Corp status as well. So you can actually elect S-Corp status, usually you do it in the current year by March 15th, but you can do it a few months after. You can do it up to a year, even two years after a prior year if you have the proper tax advice and the proper reasoning that you file with the IRS. But just know that you want to get this done by March 15th of the current year to have a properly and timely filed S-Corp election. And the way you do it is by actually sending in a form 2553 to the IRS. And then only a couple of states require you to elect S Corp status with them as well. But for the most part, you file it in with the IRS. The IRS sends you a letter back and you are then an S Corp. And I'll show you that form in just a second. There are some additional filing requirements. Some states actually charge your S Corp or your LLC a pass-through entity tax as well. You have a separate tax return. Again, there's some complexities with different states. You have some new reporting requirements as an S-Corp than you do if you're just a simple single-member LLC. And there are some additional costs and fees that go along with simply maintaining a corporation, an S-Corp, versus a single-member LLC. But again, most of the time, if you're making enough income, then the tax benefits alone of becoming an S-Corp outweigh the costs and the additional rigors of maintaining that S-Corp. So why and when consider shifting over to an S-Corp? So it primarily benefits the owners of usually an LLC if they're going to start making a hundred grand per shareholder or per actively earning owner per year. Now let's say in this case you're a single member LLC, you start making a hundred grand net income, 150, 200 grand. You would definitely benefit from just a tax perspective by becoming taxed as an S corp. Now it gets a little more complex if you're a C corp and you want to then shift over to an S corp. There's some asset and some valuation and some basis issues you need to work through. But almost always, if you're going to become an S-Corp from a C-Corp, you want to do it the day that you form the corp. Becoming an S-Corp tax-wise after you've been running business and growing a business for a number of years as a C-Corp is a bit more complex than it is going from an LLC to an S. It certainly can be done, but you definitely want to sync up with a good CPA and maybe tax attorney to help you do that. But once again, the biggest benefits, the first threshold is, are you earning $100,000 or more net income? Now, here is a big disclaimer. There are a lot of social media people out there on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and anything else that are really pushing the S-Corp concept onto sole proprietors. They're basically saying if you earn 50 grand or more, form an LLC, elect S-Corp status, and you're going to save a ton of money. It's not that simple. There are new companies being formed that exclusively push and market to single-member LLC owners that you should simply become an S Corp simply because you're making 50 or 60 grand a year more net income. Again, it's not the only thing to consider. So just beware, take all of these things with a grain of salt. There's a couple different factors that go into should you become an S Corp or not for tax purposes. So once again, the biggest thing to really consider is if you're an eligible corporation or company and you're earning 100000 or more per share, per, per actively earning manager or shareholder, then it could actually help you save five or 10000 a year simply by shifting over to an S-Corp. I'm going to do a couple examples in a few more slides. But the benefits include primarily lower self-employment tax on your earnings from your S-Corp 
versus the total net income that's taxed when you're an LLC or partnership. You still get passed through income or loss through your S Corp, just as you will with an LLC or a partnership. You do avoid double taxation that you will pay if you have a C corporation. And if you distribute dividends to shareholders, those shareholders get taxed on already taxed corporate profits. But as an S Corp, you don't have that double taxation. The company is taxed once at the shareholder level. And then you still get the QBI deduction, which is 20% discount or deduction on your income that comes from your S corporation. If your S Corp meets certain financial thresholds and you do have a separate tax return that you file as an S Corp owner that actually provides you a little bit of audit protection in some cases. If you're a single member LLC, you just have a Schedule C. If that Schedule C gets audited, your whole individual return also gets audited. If you have an S Corp or a partnership, the partnership or the S Corp can get audited and these shareholders may not be audited. So it actually can provide a layer of protection for audit risk. With the IRS and maybe some of the states if you're an S-Corp and you do everything by the book and properly. So is your business even eligible for S-Corp taxation? That's the big thing to consider too. You can elect S-Corp tax status for any future year, as I mentioned, if you are eligible. You need to be a domestic business, a U.S.-based LLC or corp. You need to have under 100 shareholders. Those shareholders must also be individuals, U.S. resident individuals as well. You can't have LLCs or corps own any stock in an S-Corp. Certain trusts and estates can get away with it, but for the most part, it's going to be one or two or three people who are U.S. residents who own the S-Corp as individuals. You can't use a holding company to own your S-Corp. you got to own it as an individual in almost all cases. There needs to be one class of stock. So there's no class A, class B, class C units as there can be in LLCs or partnerships. There's no common stock A, common stock B, preferred stock, preferred AB. No, you need to have one class of stock that all of the shareholders own. And what that also means is if one shareholder takes a distribution and she owns 50% of the business, the other owner who owns 50% also needs to take an equal distribution. You cannot distribute in equal amounts of cash through distributions in a year, you need to have everybody take out a distribution in equal proportion to their ownership on a calendar year basis. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If you need to shift income through carried interest or through profits interest through different shareholders, you can't do an S-Corp. Or you need to even it out using salary, W-2, versus profit share or carried interest. Carried interest and profit shares are generally best for LLCs and partnerships. You also need to be an eligible corporation, certain financial institutions, banks, insurance companies, and domestic international sales corporations cannot become S-Corps. They need to be LLCs or or corporations. But other than that, most small businesses can become S-Corps if they have U.S. members or owners. So once again, here's a couple reasons why you cannot and should not ever consider S-Corp if you're not a U.S. company. If you're a startup raising venture capital, you're going to go out and raise a couple million dollars from venture capital firms, angel investors. Most of them will invest through LLCs or partnerships. They're not going to invest in your S Corp. You need to be a C Corp for that. If you think that you're going to be giving out shares of stock to 20, 50, 100 different employees or other people per year, you can't. You can only have 100 shareholders. Remember that. If you think you're going to have different profit allocations and carried interest, and different shares of stock. No, you can't do that as an S Corp. And once again, you need to get it right the first time in the first day because fixing an ineligible or improperly elected S Corporation can be costly, extremely time consuming, extremely painful as far as the fees, the tax, the penalties you might end up having to pay. So here's how to elect S Corp taxation. It's actually quite simple. You fill out a form 2553. It's an IRS form. You fax it in. And as long as you're eligible, and look at the last few slides or why in the video, if you're not quite sure if you're eligible, you should be able to have that approved. The IRS will send you a letter back saying, we accept your S-Corporation tax status election. And beginning on whatever year you choose to be taxed on as an S-Corp, you will then have to file an S-Corp return for that year. So it's pretty cool and pretty easy how it works. Once you've determined with your tax pro, should you become an S-Corp? If yes, how much am I going to see potentially by doing it? Does it outweigh the cost? and then fax in the form. So here are how taxes work before and after S-Corp election. First, know that S-Corps file typically an annual calendar year 
tax return. It's an 1120S is what it's called. We'll show you that form in just a second. Most states also have a different form tax return you need to file if you're an S Corp. Some make you file just like a regular corp and pay tax. Some allow you to pass through an S Corp's profits down to the shareholders and some states simply don't have an S Corp return at all. But just know that you will have a state implication as well. Owner managers who work in the business need to take a W-2 salary for a reasonable compensation, and that will also drive how much you save or don't save on your tax return. The income is passed through, and so is the loss, from S-Corp down to its shareholders, and the shareholders pay tax on the gains and the income. Beware that there are some stock and debt basis limitations that S-Corps are subject to that single-member LLCs are not subject to. That means you need to maintain a proper balance sheet and you need to do these complex calculations each year on the tax return that determines how much loss you can take if the business loses money and, of course, how much money you loan to the business, put into the business, or that the business loans to you do does determine some limitations on the income or loss that you need to consider when you file the tax return. But again, as long as you have a good tax pro to help you maintain your basis calculations, you should be okay. You won't have much to worry about. Shareholders pay estimated income taxes on the income from the S-Corp, just like a partnership. Because again, the corporation doesn't pay federal tax, the shareholders do. On the concept of pass-through taxation, just remember that the income that an LLC, a partnership, or an S-Corporation earns passes through to the shareholders, who ultimately pay tax on the income that they earn from that partnership or S-Corp, along with any other income sources they have. That's the concept of pass-through taxation, and so it's the same with us as it is with an LLC. C-Corps pay their own federal income tax, and any dividends that are distributed out to shareholders are then taxed at the shareholder level. And once again, though, you're basically paying tax on profits that have already been taxed if you're a C-Corp, which is why, again, the term double taxation comes to mind. But you don't need to worry about that once you're an S-Corp. It's taxed once at the individual shareholder level. Another thing to consider is the different tax return. So single member LLCs file a Schedule C. It's a two or three page document that gets tagged on to the back of your Form 1040 individual return. Partnerships, multi-member LLCs, limited partnerships, general partnerships file a partnership return Form 1065 that has a K-1 that generates income for the individual shareholders, and corporations file a Form 1120. Corporations pay their own income tax to the federal government and to the states. Now, the new return you're going to file is called an S-Corporation Return Form 1120-S. It's sort of a hybrid between the corporate 1120 and the 1065 because it has a profit and loss statement, a balance sheet, and then it has basis and some shareholder Item get a Schedule K-1 as well. So you have both a salary typically from an S-Corp return, and then you also have a K-1 that adds or removes to your individual income depending if the business made a gain or loss. So just know that once you become an S-Corp, you'll probably have a final return, Partnership Corp or Schedule C, if you've already filed one in the past. If this is your first year as an entity and you elect S-Corp, then you will, in the first year and moving forward, file a Form 1120-S. And so basically, let's wrap it all together. How much money can you really save by becoming an S-Corp for tax purposes? Well, let's use the example. Let's say you're a Schedule C, a single-member LLC owner, and you make $100,000 in net income this year. You would pay 15.3% of that $100,000 in self-employment tax. And after a small deduction for the self-employment tax, you'll pay income tax on the remaining $100,000. So you basically pay two taxes. Now, that's quite a bit of tax. Now, the S Corporation alone, since you need to take a W-2 salary, let's assume that a reasonable salary is fifty dollars $50,000. You will pay 15.3% payroll tax. It's the same thing as self-employment tax. They're the same thing, same numbers, except that the company itself would pay half of the 15.3% and get a deduction for it, and then use the employee pay the other half of 15.3% out of your payroll paycheck taxes. And in the end, you end up paying combined $7,650 in this scenario. And then the remaining only $50,000 of your income is taxed at ordinary income tax rates. And of course, you earned a 50K salary, so you also have 50000 in ordinary income that gets taxed. But in the end, 
mainly the savings is going to come down to the reduction in payroll taxes or self-employment tax. They're one and the same. And that could save you about $7,600 if you're LLC or S Corp earn equal amounts of money, which is 100000 split between salary and net income as an S Corp or 100000 straight up income on a Schedule C. So we can get into some more detailed and complex calculations in other videos. But in the end, if you want to save money on your taxes, you need to be making at least 100000 in net income from a single member LLC. If you're a C Corp and you're earning more than that, and you want to be distributing profits to shareholders regularly, you probably should have been an S-Corp from the beginning. But if you're an eligible S-Corp and you think it does make sense to shift over to S-Corp status, talk with your tax advisor. There's plenty of ways to do it, even though it's a little more complex than moving from a single member LLC. But if you can save $7,000, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 bucks a year by shifting over to an S-Corp, you should definitely consider it. If it fits you strategically, and you are legally allowed to do it. So I hope this video has been helpful. Once again, if you're an eligible business, few owners, no plans to raise outside capital, you want to grow a profitable business, take money out, you think you're going to be making 100, 200,000 plus per year in profits, and you want to save 10 or 20 grand in taxes, I would suggest talking to a couple of tax advisors about electing S Corp taxation. Have them show you how much money you can save. And if there's any pitfalls that I've already mentioned along the way in doing so. I hope this has been helpful. Hit the subscribe button. We'll keep making videos just like this. And we'll see you in the next one.